Hello all, good evening and welcome to, uh, to the session. Uh, along with uh, Mr. Siddharth, I am Sumant bringing you a very, very important uh, question which probably is around the minds of a lot of us. What is this artificial intelligence, uh, intelligence which is going to do to our careers? You know, Is it going to hurt our careers? Is it going to help our careers? With a lot of phenomena happening around. On the latest of all the conversations, chat, chat GPT also coming into picture. A lot of such questions, a lot of such queries, you know, a lot of such uh, doubts and misdoubts are going to be answered today through this webinar, which we, Ideology, in partnership with KPMG, bring to you. The focus of this webinar is focusing, you know, is on understanding the careers around artificial intelligence just not in technology, but across various domains, and what that is mean to us as professionals, to us as consumers, as individuals. So let me welcome you all for this webinar. Thank you for signing up for this webinar and showcasing your interest to understand what is happening around. And in the presence of all of you guys, let me also invite Mr. Siddharth Gupta, who is Director of Digital Lighthouse of KPMG India, uh, Mr. Siddharth comes with an extremely varied experience of 15 years of and more. Probably I'll leave a personal introduction to Mr. Siddharth himself, you know, which is something I always prefer uh, uh, you know, for an individual to introduce because they spell out their story better than anybody else. But what I know brief about him, he seems to be a, you know, a person who understands this business very well, influencing and leading businesses which are bringing about transformational uh, transformations in digital spectrum. So welcome uh, Siddharth uh, for this uh, webinar. And could you just please take the audience through your experience and your profile? So that thanks, thanks, so much. thanks for having me here. And uh, um, I'll, I'll just start with maybe my introduction and then, then I'll hand it over back to you. Hi everyone, I'm Siddharth. I'm a director with a lighthouse practice in KPMG in India. The digital lighthouse practice is the data analytics and the AI practice of KPMG. And uh, I started my career as as uh, assistant manager with City. And over a period of time, I moved to consulting in 2011. I continued to work for data analytics reporting and then eventually AI. And uh, I have been in domain of data and analytics for over 15 years been in consulting for almost 12 years now that's that's a bit about me and uh, i would say that this is the best time to be in in field of data and ai yeah and and we would we would talk about uh, why is this the best time to be in the field of data and ai thank you Siddha. that's fabulous to have you on this uh, uh, webinar and really privileged to have a man of your experience and you know just not just a professional but i think some of the conversations which you have had earlier also tells me how, as an individual, you believe in this philosophy of digital transformation, you know, the kind of change it is bringing around us, and the change for good. So really good to have you. So for the audience, uh, just to introduce myself, being the host, I think it's also important for me to share what I come back, uh, come, what background I come with. I am Sumanth. I uh, head the business of Ideology, uh, and I'm a part of Gus Global Services, which is into education. It's a global education group based out of London and India. Uh, our endeavor has always been one simple philosophy, working professionals who are looking to enhance their careers, to grow in their careers, what kind of futuristic skills they require so that they stay ahead of the curve. As a result, they become better and better professionally and also grow in their careers. And that's the reason why if you look at the kind of programs ideology focuses on, we focus on the new age technology programs, you know, like the techno manager program along with KPMG and we partner with industry first because we are firm believer that while education institutions teach you one philosophy, the industry teaches you what is right now applicable in their own spectrum and what skills to be uh, uh, you know, learned so that they can be deployed, not just being employable, but also being deployable into the various fields. And that's how this collaboration of ideology and a big giant like KPMG has happened. And today we bring to you a very pertinent conversational topic. Let me also share my screen and so that we can start uh, by asking Siddharth the various questions we would like him to answer us in this particular conversation, right? 
So I think uh, just to start, I think the first and the most important question, Siddharth, uh, a lot of us having in our mind, so much of conversation is happening around uh, the AI replacing jobs, okay? And just not replacing jobs in terms of technological jobs, but also various domains. You know, we see the application of artificial intelligence across domains. You know, today, today's sensation as we keep speaking, chat GPT, and everybody's talking about chat GPT. What is this new phenomena? With so much of evolution happening in this space, you know, in the safe space of uh, artificial intelligence in various domains, what kind of upskilling should uh, practicing professionals, whether they could be from technology background or non-technology background, should be looking at? How, how should one prepare for such kind of uh, ever changing phenomena yeah i i think before i answer that question uh, there's there's a question that i would like to answer that one first in terms of let's understand how ai is changing businesses how it is impacting our life and then perhaps i would like to take up the question in terms of how one should keep up the pace in terms of the upcoming technology and the way technology is evolving and uh, if I don't know how many of you have used Indian railways for booking tickets now and maybe 10 years back. So 10 years back when we used to use the website called IRCTC to book tickets and it always used to show us a waiting and we used to wait for like, you know, a tatkal period, which is two or three days prior to the train date. And that is when we used to book because all the normal tickets were either in the waiting or RAC mode. And we never knew whether this RAC or waiting would get confirmed or not. But today, if you log in onto IRCT website and try to book a ticket, when it shows that there's a waiting of 95 seats, 100 seats, it also shows what is the probability of this ticking, ticket getting confirmed or you getting a confirmed seat. That is the power of AI that it has provided to the life of consumers. Now you already know at the time of booking a waiting ticket that, okay, there's a 95% probability that it would get confirmed. So I can book it. I did not waste my time in terms of booking a ticket, which has a 30% or 20% probability. That is, that is example number one. And, um, if, if you and um, my examples would come a lot from the banking sector because you know that's that's how I started my career and you know I do spend a lot of time with banks still despite being in consulting. So I don't know how many of you have opened an account in SBI for that matter or any any of the PSU sector bank. So I I, I opened my first account in SBI back in two thousand five and. I mean, you have to go walk into the branch, fill up that particular form, get someone to introduce you to the branch along with all the documents. And then you submit those documents to the branch. They would take time to process it. And maybe after a couple of weeks, you will get an intimation whether your account has been opened up or not. Today, if you have to open an account, all you need to do is just log into the website provide your relevant documentation uploaded. You need to upload your selfie. You need to verify your Aadha using OTP and it's it's done. Within an hour or two, you would you would be able to open your account. And what happens behind it, there's, there's a lot of algorithms running. So when you upload your selfie, your selfie gets matched to your photo ID card. It gives a confirmation, okay, there's a this person match, you can proceed and you know, our, I try to do it sometime and I, I opened one of my crypto exchange account during the COVID time. It took me, I think, less than 10 minutes to get my KYC completed and get my account opened. So from the time to two weeks to, to 10 minutes to get an account open and get the KYC done, this is the power of technologies that we are talking about today. And uh, how, how to keep up to this change in pace maybe we i would try to answer this during the course of this webinar if that's okay absolutely so i think uh, in fact this brings me to a very important question which is also the topic of our uh, conversation you know the the, the the headline of our topic uh, before i actually ask you the next question i request all our uh, you know, viewers and participants, in case you have any specific questions you would like Siddharth or me to address, please drop those questions in the chat or Q&A. 
and we will pick them up and during the course of our conversation we'll probably address those questions also because we let's keep it as interactive as possible it's just not whatever questions we were able to collate by in interacting with our own students by working professionals industry because siddha comes with from kvng you know we have they do a lot of analysis they work with a lot of industry uh, uh, you know uh, partners and they bring in a lot of insights you know which is data heavy etc we interact with a lot of students who come with their own set of queries questions so that is what we have compiled right now it as comprehensive as possible but however any specific questions you would like us to address please free to drop them in the chat or the q and a and we shall pick them up all right thank you for that uh, siddha the question here is that with all this automation which you talked about mm -hmm. what kind of risk are there for jobs you know the market is people are saying that market is becoming uh, uh, challenging research is coming in ai is becoming the uh, uh, the new competitor to our workforce so where does it stand do you think there's a real threat to we as humans as professionals am i going to have my job or am i going to lose my job i think that's a question i really want to be direct and ask you <laughs> yeah no. so this is something that uh, I, mean, I i get to you know answer often and you know a, a couple of days before i was speaking to one of the journalist and uh, she was like you know with chat gpt coming in i fear that you know whether i'd be required to write articles or not mm -hmm. and uh, see we need to understand that it is not ai or technology that's uh, um, taking your job it is acting as an enabler so that you can focus more on what human are supposed to do we as human we can't process so much information and data we we have been doing it but and uh, we we should not we should focus in terms of how to enable ourselves to make better decisions to make better decisions for our businesses and that is what ai is doing so whether it would take up your job your job at it is at risk or not so um let me let me go back to the time where computers came in back in 90s right i mean banking we used to do ledgers on on like uh, pen paper etc when computers came in their job were at risk right what what did bankers do they, they learned computers they they created softwares like such as mainframe right they they enabled themselves they upgraded their skills and then came internet we what what happened it changed everything what did we do as a human right you know we learned internet and today i believe i i won't find anyone who would not know internet even my father you know he's he's using internet he's there on whatsapp he he sends me those forwarders in whatsapp university of delhi right so what what do we do as a human we have to evolve we have to catch up to the pace and if we not yes we are at risk not just our jobs you uh, know maybe our lifestyle is at risk no i think this is this is a very very important point you brought in uh, siddharth it's not that a uh, technology is a threat to humans our inability to adapt to the technology learn the skills and evolve our, uh, along with it in the journey i think that is the most critical part and that's reason why possibly uh, the continuous learning you know because what, what many times what, what happens is that we are professionals you know we are working in in in, in a place 5 years 7 years 8 years and we get into a comfort zone of what we already are aware from our background you know i keep giving this example i did my mba from iim kori kod and that was way back in 2007 and it is marketing the kind of marketing which i learned in 2007 from a extremely premier institute you know which is iim and my first job was launching ipl indian premier league a big a league mm -hmm. the kind of marketing which we have done for ipl launch to the kind of marketing today which i am doing on a day to day basis you know in terms of the entire change we talking about programmatic marketing where ai tells us what kind of marketing to be done you know what kind of keywords to be checked at what kind of ads to be shown you now so much of shift which has happened today while i i call myself as a strong marketing professional if i don't evolve with this change either i am overtaken by the kind of technological evolution or advancement which is happening or i am no more relevant in this market i think the key there is relevance and for each one of us to stay relevant it's not about being 
scared about what kind of technology is coming, new technology is coming because the pace at which technology is coming in today, I mean, I think it's it's running faster than time. I mean, they say nothing can run faster than time. <laughs> no, I think nobody changed. There is technology is one thing which moves faster than you know than time. So it's very imperative for professionals not to become comfortable uh, in their own space, but keep a tab on what kind of uh, uh, evolutions are happening. And I think that's a place where I believe the program which we have created with KPMG, you know, the techno manager, we call it as techno manager because we don't want people just to be technological in their approach or managerial in their approach. It's a beautiful blend of those combination. And that's where I want to bring you the next question, uh, uh, Siddharth. You've been a professional with a lot of experience, consulted a lot of uh, you know companies, met with a lot of professionals. You lead a good you know a, a good team of young guys. Where do you see the fitment of this techno managerial requirement in organizations right now? Okay, so see, we, we we need to understand that technology in itself is not gonna change the world, right? Until and unless it's provide a value to a business, right? it would not be of any value and um i mean if if you go back in the history you would have heard of something called enigma machine right which was a machine used by germans to encrypt the code that they used to trans to send it to their soldiers right and uh, i think world war ii is when this uh, uh alan Turing created a machine intelligence as it was called to decrypt this particular coded messages that german used to send so that is when machine intelligence got evolved, right? And from then um, to, to the time when AI was coined in, I think, 1956, if I'm not mistaken, mm. it did not make such a breakthrough because a lot of challenges that they had at that point of time, data, how to store that data, how to analyze that data. There, there was a lot of investment that only governments can afford with respect to storing that data, with respect to analyzing that data. Now with the technology coming in, you know, you have cloud, you have databases, you have data lakes, storing data, analyzing data has become a click of a button. Now you and, and that is why you would see so many you know, news coming in. AI is getting implemented on this, AI on the AI is getting implemented. And, and my favorite one is that, you know, there's a use case and there's a lot of investment being made um, using AI to interpret what humans are thinking. Wow. Yeah. So, so that, that's, that, that's the way AI is developing. So you have the premises ready and all you need to do is, is come up with a, use case on how to use AI on that underlying premise. And that is where we should focus on. And, no, I... and, and you would see there, there are so many, you know, um, um, so chat GPT came up uh, a couple of months back and uh, so did Google came up with the, their own AI engine, which is Bard. Right. So all all you have to do is identify where you can use ai to transform your business to enable value bring value to your business and uh, i i can i can take a lot of names but i would rather not who are transforming their business creating competitive advantage data and ai today is not looked at as a support function anymore it is it is taken a forefront seat it is creating immense value for businesses and I, I i can show you one of the example and it is it is creating competitive advantage no i think i really like that choice of the words you have said today uh understanding the technology ai and uh, you know or data analytics or data and uh, science etc as a technology piece is one part but the real competitive advantage is when you're able to apply this technology in solving a business situation or a business case. Now that becomes, that's where the understanding of just not a specialist of technology, but somebody who can relate it from a business dimension and able to blend both of them. Now that is the real, uh, you know, differentiator. I think that's exactly what uh, um, Siddharth, we have been really 
trying to do through our techno managerial program of KPMG as well. I'm, you know, you're, you're one of the anchor behind this program, and I'm sure you understand the what kind of the, the thought went into it. The idea was just not to teach technological skills because there are a commodity today. A lot of people know how to write an algorithm. They probably are working on the base of writing algorithm. But that in isolation, not able to apply to a business phenomena, solving a real-time business case is as good as you know having a, a mobile phone without uh, any kind of a Wi-Fi or anything in it today, right? Isn't it? Because yeah, it's not smart anymore. <laughs> it, it's no more smart anymore, absolutely, right. So I think that brings me to my next question, and which is very tra traditionally both these terms of data science and artificial intelligence, both in terms of job and perception, have always been seen as technological jobs or a technological uh, uh, aspiration, you know, an expertise. Now, the fact that you brought in a business application, how relevant are these across various domains? Or is it just still a technology, IT, tech-related uh, 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 phenomena? Or is it something which is applicable across domains, across industries? What's your experience around this? So uh, if you ask me, I would say today, we would not find any industry or function where data and AI are not getting leveraged, right? And uh, uh, so I, I can take a couple of examples. So one of the largest uh, retail oil player in India is trying to do their network planning exercise by simulating the existing retail outlet to the upcoming cities and uh, um, city plans that India have simulating their existing data points with respect to their existing retails, mapping it to the upcoming plans of uh, authorities, and then figuring out where to create their retail outlets. This is one of the example. And uh, one of the other example is, <clears throat> Uh, one of one of the uh, we all have cars. We would have gone to get them serviced, etc. Right, and so when when we fill the customer service form, we we give them certain feedback. We give them certain scores. So one of the largest uh, uh, automaker, what they are doing is they are using AI to collect this data, analyze it using NLP, do sentiment analysis on top of that, and analyze which service centers are the problematic service centers, which customers are raising complaints or are not happy with the services that has been provided. So this is what, and, and maybe if you can go back to uh, the the video that I would like to take the participants through in terms of. I will do that. Okay. Let yeah. Me, uh, so share that video on the YouTube. Okay. So we, we all would have heard of these, you know, uh, vintage automakers, Toyota, Volkswagen, General Motors, right? And and there comes a new player who embeds AI and One. leverages AI in in automobile sector, and and we will see how and what they what is it that they are doing. This is this is just one of the example. It's not just our uh, different maneuvers. Um... So the first, the, the first one, it such as is a lane change that's close by, but the uh, car brakes pretty harshly, so it's pretty uncomfortable. Is the volume audible? The next maneuver is that's the lane change bit late, so it speeds up, goes behind the other car, goes in front of the other cars, and finally does the lane change. But now it risks missing the left turn. We do thousands of such searches in a very short time span. Um, because these are all physics-based models, these futures are very easy to simulate. Uh, and in the end, we have a set of candidates, and we finally choose one based on the automatic conditions of safety, comfort, and easily making the turn. So now the car has chosen this path. And you can see that as the car executes this trajectory, uh, it pretty much matches what we had planned. The cyan plot on the right side here, um, that one is the actual velocity of the car. And the white line bit underneath it is, was a plan. So we are able to plan for 10 seconds here and able to manage. As, as, as you can see in the video, all they are doing is um, they are simulating what possible 
scenarios could come in future and um, the entire time frame of doing that is 1.5 milliseconds for creating 2500 such scenarios and uh, for people like me who who don't know what millisecond is where well, even when i saw it i also googled it 1000 milliseconds make 1 second this is how fast the decision making is and and if we go back to the slide on one hand side you would see all the vintage automakers like toyota gm volkswagen all all the evaluation put together 1.1 trillion dollar and tesla on its own a single company has a valuation of 1.1 trillion dollar this is the power of ai that we are talking about how ai is enabling businesses to create immense value and competitive advantage Amazing. In fact, I think some of the, I think you already touched based on uh, Marty's example of how they are using AI, you know, in driving the, uh, the sales experience. Some of the examples I think you were also discussing earlier, um, Siddharth, was how it's being applied into sports. It's a very common thing. Uh, a lot of our audience would have watched Shayash Iyer, a popular Indian cricketer, when, you know, wearing a, a kind of a K sticker armband. And that itself runs on an extreme real-time data and AI algorithms, which understands the blood glucose levels of a player. Just not a player; it's being used as uh, contextually as you know. Some of uh, my parents use it. You know, some of the elders use it just to keep you keep a tab of how your body is functioning. So it's an application, just not in sport, but also in health. Again, a completely different uh, domain. We're talking about media and entertainment. You know, Netflix, the kind of way it uses algorithms today, basis on your viewing habits and hobbies. And as a result, recommends you what to be watched next or what kind of shows to be shown. Uh, do appreciate that this is not a technology alone. Netflix is actually a media and entertainment organization. So somebody, uh, a techno manager, understood the application of AI in a business case scenario. I was able to blend both of them. And that's the kind of... Uh, jobs people have been talking about and this is one example from chat gpt how it's kind of changing the way content and communications have been you know, systems have been functioning so i think uh, uh, the key here uh, uh, siddharth is that the application is so prevalent it's there everywhere so if we don't tune into the kind of application you know and understand it again like you rightly said not just from a technology perspective but also its application to a business phenomena. Now, then the, the, that particular professional will probably will only be one side of the story and the kind of growth they're looking at, you know, the kind of development they're looking at probably might not happen to them, right? And, and I'm presuming that's the kind of uh, 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 thought process and philosophy you are also uh, you know, carrying with respect to uh, this area. No, I I with you completely. See, until unless you marry both technology and business, you would not be able to create value. And and we we can talk about such examples as well. So uh, there was this large hotel chain in India. They they carried out one of the IoT uh, POCs with respect to uh, so you have the card keys to your rooms and. Uh, when you have to go to near to the lift, you have to press the button and the lift would come down and then you go to your respective floor. What what they tried to do is um, they, they enabled an IoT device in the lift and the car so that whenever you walk near to the lift, the lift would automatically come down to you and then you don't even have to press anything. A basis your card and the floor that has been assigned to you, it would take you to your floor. A fantastic idea, um, and and it went well for uh, ten days, fifteen days, until there was a wedding in that particular hotel. Amazing. Now, what happens? People who are staying in the hotel and attending the wedding are walking around the lobby, and the lift is not moving on any other floor; it's just staying there on the ground floor. And that is when you know they called off that POC and, and that the point that I am trying to make is until unless you marry the technology with the business, you foresee all the challenges that it may or may not face, you take it until the end, it would not help. Technology in itself would not create a immense value for any of the business until unless you know you bring in the blend of both.
and that is exactly what i think sumanth is also trying to make that you you have to make a blend of both and that is exactly what we also do in kpmg right hmm absolutely and that, that that's i think that's the that's the philosophy of this program also the idea is to create techno managers now there are some of the questions which i think uh, uh, we've gathered from audience you know and some of those questions uh, which are uh, probably uh, come through the various surveys which you have done also uh, and probably I'll, pro i'll pick up one such one which is one of my favorite question a lot many times uh, this is a question which keeps coming uh, from a lot of our students a from a non technology background because the meet we talk about artificial intelligence we talk about uh, data science the perception is that you need to know coding you need to have some kind of algorithmic understanding or some bit of basics around technology all right so so in such scenarios how do you see them be growing in their careers or able to adopt to such you know adapt to such kind of uh, uh, changes that are happening which are more or less technology driven so um, I, i'll give an example a fantastic meeting i had yesterday with one of the uh, ai head ai head of one of the uh, motor companies group right i'll i'll not quote the name of the person so he's he's a lawyer by profession who did his mba again and uh, he is heading the ai division for that particular organization i i doubt that he would have an extensive hands on experience of doing programming but what he knows is how technology would help create value for the business he knows the business well and he knows how to use the technology in various aspects of business and um yesterday we were talking about creating a a museum in a metaverse wow right and so that that is what you need to do you need to understand technology you need to understand where it can and cannot fit where it will or will not deliver value you need not be an expert in writing codes i think and, uh, and, and with bit if so much involvement happening in technology you would also see that even if you want to um, go on write a code there are platforms available uh, such as low code no code platforms hmm. that you you can easily create predictive models without even writing codes there are so um, chat gpt for that example you you ask it you know that i want to write a code on this particular sector this particular thing and it would it would give you the code absolutely in fact uh, 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 sida i don't I, i can't agree more with you than you know, anything else because and I, i'm again going back to my own personal example i i come from a non tech background okay and today uh, uh, we operate on technologies we operate on technologies just across the spectrum of things which we do uh, and one of the things which we have also learned is once you understand what technology can solve you don't have to be the person who is figuring out the technological solution like you said a a lot of them are available on the shelf right and second it's not about again a technology code which is there and you how do you write how do you change it you know, there are there are technologies there's experts out there who can do that but the real uh, 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 you know the real differentiator happens when you understand okay for this business problem you know what this solutioning is is probably the appropriate part of it for that you do not have to be a person from a technological background a lot of people like siddal gave an example today in fact ai in law is becoming a very good phenomena i was talking to one of those lawyers who are trying to look at an algorithm driven contract uh, contract writing because contract writing is a, such a mundane job but however the very critical uh, uh, in a, a piece of work for a lot of lawyers contract drafting now they are looking at how do they introduce ai to make this entire uh, contract drafting and verification happening in a very uh, uh, systematic manner today we sign a lot of documents which are which is ai driven you know, it is no more a paper and pen signing of agreements or you know or any kind of documents so i think these are all application of technology created somewhere by some expert but 
a non technology background person completely coming from a different uh, 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 diaspora is able to implement it to solve my problem i think that's that's where the focus should be and that that is that's a place where i think all of us should start moving on to as well now similarly i think uh, rishikesh one of our attendees attendees has also come out with a another relevant question a question which is there in a lot of people's mind as well i am a pressure or somebody with less experience compared to a lot of when we talk about techno managers you know that that th there are two big words in that there's so much of technology in that and there is also a managerial uh, element around it so coming from a uh, less experience you know zero to two years of experience how can one progress into that does it first of all inhibit somebody's career progression because today i believe uh, you know with all this startup phenomena which is happening the traditional years piling up growth models have been cracked you know people move more into fast track the uh, like the way we have uh, priority check in models i'm <laughs> checking and priority progression in uh, areas also so how, how how can somebody of that uh, background look at a fast track career expansion by embracing these skills of technology and management through our programs so i i think uh, the way i would prefer to uh, to have embraced learning is a t shaped model mm -hmm. so a, a t shaped model is you know where i know one subject in depth right i know in and out of that particular subject and uh, the bar on top is where i know bits and pieces of a lot of um domain perhaps or technology or functions and that is how you should um, as as a beginning of your career you would have picked up something maybe in depth right or maybe you have you would have touched up on multiple areas of uh, of your career or functions area of expertise so whatever you think is missing is something that you you may want to pick up and uh, that is something which i did right i i started uh, with a bank and you know that is what you know the <clears throat> the t of my i mean the vertical line of my t was and i i started picking up on various areas later on i started picking up on technology i started picking up on analytics etc 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 and it, it it still goes on right so yeah that that is what i would recommend to somebody who is at the beginning of of his or her career and uh, and then maybe at a later point of time once your vertical is strong enough then you you can you know you can pick up multiple areas that that you know you you would like as your area of interest all right so at, at a risk of something siddhat asked me not to call out and i am taking that uh, you know a, a, a liberty of uh, you know calling it out um, uh, siddhat has a very fabulous uh, uh, linkedin profile so those of you who are looking to follow him trust me he has been a mentor to a lot of people in fact i am more than happy it's a privilege from ideology uh, uh, for this program of our techno manager siddhat is one of our expert faculty and also a mentor for a lot of young professionals looking to guide and you know mold your career in the spectrum of technology and you know techno management kind of a spectrum so you know, we we are happy to have siddhar as one of our guiding light in this entire uh, program creation and delivery as well thank you siddhar you know for uh, uh, willing to spend your valuable time in mentoring uh, a lot of young careers your expertise and your experience there i'm sure is going to be very really helpful for a lot of our uh, folks who are part of our uh, uh, this and it's a very uh, limited uh, set of people this is an extremely selection based uh, uh, program we're only looking at 25 of which a lot of seats have already been filled so for all of you who are looking to move your careers towards techno managerial uh, uh, positions and career growths this is probably the perfect platform with experts like siddhar and a lot many other Uh, expert across the globe we have a lot of global uh, uh, experts from sap global you know we have people who, uh, uh, and they are not just indian you know from from global perspective to give you an understanding of just not how techno managers are uh, kind of careers are happening in india but at a global level so there's a and i'm sure the team will share you a complete detail of the kind of program which we are looking at it 
have a look at it and this is your best opportunity to probably create your version 2.0 now, because we're talking about growth and careers and jobs, etc., Siddharth, and I think that's where the next. Uh, there's there's a selfish reason in terms of why I, I focus on mentoring uh, participants and uh, we we tie up with a lot of universities, etc. So uh, in in 2020, once the COVID lockdown uh, were kind of over, uh, you you would have noticed there's so much demand that was there in the market, and uh, we were short of talent that we wanted to hire and we used to have so so many calls so many interviews etc but but we were not able to hire the right talent and still if we were able to we were short in numbers right and uh, our head uh, and me and and one of uh, uh, our partners is like you know what do we do we are not able to find the talent that we we want to hire there's always a gap mm -hmm. and then our head said why don't we create talent <laughs> let's create talent and let's hire that talent <laughs> so yeah from from using that talent to you know we 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 decided that you know let's let's do this and absolutely i'm really happy because i think uh, when we're talking with uh, anana as well i think that's that is one of the vision of this program that the best talent from this program you know would at least be having an interview kind of a conversation with kpmg and the the, the network of people and once we when we talk, started talking to industry they were all excited oh wow if kpmg is partnering you know, you're creating techno man because techno manager is a need everywhere in you 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 talk i was talking to a supply chain they need techno managers we were talking to a oil and gas company you know they were talking about techno managers we're talking to a, 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 a something in media and entertainment they are talking about technology techno managers and everybody's talking this has become the buzzword right now okay somebody who understands the application of technology Towards business decisions, towards manager decisions, beautiful. That's like a perfect, uh, uh, full course meal for them. You know, it has the, you know the perfect dessert, the perfect starters, and everything in it, right? So yeah, I think that that brings me to the next question. Like I said, we're talking about jobs, careers. Uh, which industries and domains are probably the right bet? You know, when when people are into investment, they say, okay, which domain, which industry should I be putting my money on so that the stocks grow rapidly? You know, if, if I am I'm looking for a career change or a move, mm -hmm. your suggestion be, you know, these are probably some of the domains, some of the industries, some of the job kind of model of jobs you should be preparing for. So I think industries, functions uh, don't, don't really matter much, right? What, what matters is the underlying premises, right? As far as you are able to marry, um, uh, the benefits of technology with with the functions with the industry you you would stay relevant for anything and uh, if, if you i would you were to ask me what would pick up on uh, in in area of ai in next two to five years given uh, the the exhaustive laws that are coming across on data privacy I would uh, I would say that we we can uh, surely uh, expect some regulations around AI that would ensure the governance of of the AI models being created, the data that gets used in these AI models. So that that is one of the area. Another uh, focus area, and I, I'm I'm talking about niche under AI. I, I mean I know AI is already there. There's, there's something called explainable AI. The model that you have built for you to trust the model and comprehend what it is actually doing is something that, that is has already picked up specifically in, in banking sector. And like I said, you know, I'll, I'll keep on going to banking. <laughs> so it has already picked up and um, it's a matter of time you know, before other industry picks that up as well. And both both kind of go hand in hand you know as soon as you know you see these regulations coming in all all the ai models that are being talked about today and getting implemented in businesses today you would have to uh, uh, get it uh, under that regulation so yeah and absolutely i think data ai and and you know a lot of other aspects are coming up the the, the areas with the application then as becoming an important would probably be the hottest areas to look at jobs right now 
uh, Pawan, one of our uh, attendees, has asked two very interesting questions. I think one of them we've tried to answer a little earlier itself, like how to ensure career pivoting after working in a non-tech role for four years, right? To a, to a place where we, we've answered that question, probably we'll again re-look at it with uh, keeping uh, uh, Pawan's question in mind. But I think his primary question or a concern I understand is not able to take the plunge and make that leap of faith from the domain he is in to a little more technology or a techno management kind of a, a, in a place. Uh, yeah, so I think it's for me, it's more of an, uh, probably a mentor question, mental questions is that on your side <laughs> rather, than a, rather than a skill question there. Sure. So I, I don't think that it's a leap of faith that that's that's the right term to use. I would say it's a gradual transformation or um, evolution that you have to do of yourself in your career. Right. I mean, and if you if you go back to 2002, when I, I used to learn Java or perhaps HTML a SQL and and See, it is it is not relevant anymore. Nobody uses HTML. If if you go and search for you know HTML jobs on LinkedIn or Nokia.com, you would hardly find anything. Those skills are dead. I I can't survive on those skills. So, gradually you have to pick up things that are relevant in the industry. And that is why I would not call it leap of faith because you are not leaving something and going somewhere else. You are transforming yourself to become equipped to take up your next role. And whatever you have learned in these four years is going to stay with you forever. And you have to build on top of that. Like like I said, that you know, T shaped learning is something that uh, I'm I'm very fond of. So, and that that vertical line would always be there. Absolutely, I think uh, uh, Pawan probably is just followed up with this question also, saying the transformation is evident. But being a non tech guy, it seems daunting to learn the ropes of tech and reach up to the competitive level. So Pawan, you know, my two things, and I as like I was telling you, I think I gave my own personal example where I said. I was a marketing guy, but the marketing skills I had I learned, and I'm talking about from a, from the top most university institution in our country, at least perceptibly, IAMs, is totally different from the kind of skills I possess today. And I'm talking about after almost 17 years of experience of being in different different domains and different different industry, and some of that part has been as an entrepreneur myself doing multiple things. The the key there, Pawan, is that. Two things are you know inevitable, and I think this is a very strong philosophy. One of my mentor or coach told me, change is inevitable. That means you like it or not, you accept it or not, change is going to happen. But there's a choice in that, which is our growth. Growth is a choice. That means some people might have that apprehension. Do I really have to get into the change today? Maybe I will wait for some more time. Or maybe the time is not right. You know, that's why I said we are in a comfort zone. We 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 are a we are we are a king in our own empire. Should we really go outside and conquer more? Because the, the reality is that if you don't go out and try conquering more at the at the pace at which the world is changing, somebody else will come and conquer you. So so Suman, you remind me of uh, something called a boiling frog syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I i don't know if uh, participants are uh, aware of this but uh, it's like you know uh, there's a pan and the frog jumps into the boiling pan so initially he enjoys that warmth of water and uh, he's uh, um, he's afraid to jump out he's like you know it's okay i'm, I'm enjoying it here until and unless it becomes too hot for him but by the time it becomes too hot he has lost his energy to even jump out of that pan and True. he ends up dying. Absolutely. That, that, that is the boiling frog syndrome, right? And you, you don't want to be one of them. 
Yeah, and Pawan absolutely empathize with your, you know, with your anger, with your fear as well. I understand each of us when we want to do the change, you know, a lot of fear, a lot of apprehension, a lot of misdoubts keep uh, troubling us, and it's it's a very common thing, just not for you. You you talk about, I'm sure today Siddharth, when he looks for some kind of change, some change is coming in the neuron system, like COVID was was a phenomenal change for all of us. You know, our immediate human reaction is freeze, fright, flight, and either we freeze in the change scenario, uh, that means we don't react. Or we run away, flight, or we fight, right? That you know, we, I really want to uh, 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 avoid the change. But the, the reality is that there's always a choice which we have, and the choice is: do we want to be ahead of a change? Do we want to fight with the change? That means change uh, uh, has come. Okay, let me probably once the change is coming higher, let me uh, hang to the change and then move slowly to another place. Or do you want to ride the change? That means you are top of the change. You know what change is coming in? Let me jump onto the change and move the change to the place where I want it to be moved. So I think as young professional, you're only four years of experience, you know, which means you're a very young professional in your career. This is the time. If you now jump onto the change, and that's exactly what our endeavor through this KPMG's Techno Manager program to provide you the platform. To provide you that conduit, you know, that channel which will make you from the place where you are, the kind of fears which you have, to crack them and make you go to a place where you are more secured. And when you look back, you say, you know what? I'm right now commanding the change. I right now lead, uh, you know, a significant change has happened in my own career where I've progressed ahead. Hence, we are not doing it as a mass program. 25 selected young professionals of this country and only uh, yesterday we have a student from uh, Africa as well who joined us this who got selected to this program Siddharth so uh, very focused set of 25 professionals globally mentored taught trained by KPMG professionals so that when they come out they become the leaders for their respective organizations or for uh, uh, you know prospective organizations now that's the objective and that's the kind of focus we are we are laser focused we're going on this particular program so hope that answers a lot of your uh, questions uh, Pawan. it's time just just take on the flight you just have to put your buckle up you know seat belt i'm sure the flight is ready to take off and the landing at the right destination is our uh, you know uh, you know we'll take care of that all right so let me uh, uh, go to one couple of last few questions with that uh, you know uh, just to bring in a little more uh, uh, you know i think this is a question we've already asked in terms of data analytics experience and in other experience and you know we've also talked about uh, uh, starting out my career what kind of uh, two areas you know technology and manager should be the focus areas as well so we probably most of the questions our audience have asked and what we're able to collate uh, we were able to bring in there are there, there are maybe from my side there are a couple of other questions i would like to ask probably speaking uh, some of the words of our audience and one such question Siddharth, is that there has to be a starting point for each one of us you know like by the question of pavan and a few of us some of us might not be able to express it pavan was courageous enough to express his anxiety and the concern in the public forum for a lot of us uh, who are probably in the middling of our early ages of our career, you know, four years, five years. What is our starting point? You know, where do we get started today? You know, today I sit, I get off this webinar. Where do I get started? What is the first thing you want me to do? Go start learning chat GPT, you know, start learning everything. What is my starting point? Okay, so um, let let me see if I got the got, uh, question correctly. So you you wanna understand where to start or where uh, where to start the learning or where would you start as a techno manager in industry? Where do I start my learning? A, I mean, what what should my first thought process be? Yes, I am inspired right now that I need to take a career or move my career towards techno manager. So right. I think. Uh, Answer I please go and uh, apply for our techno manager program. But I think more philosophically, <laughs> more philosophically, at a career, at things which I do, the things which I observe, things which I read up, what should be my starting point? Okay. So first of all, um, first thing is the self-realization. You need to realize that you need to upskill, you need to learn something. Right. And the moment you figure out that, yes, this is something that I want to learn, 
and it could be uh, it could be anything right it could be uh, an area of expertise in ai and ai is a vast domain and the, this uh, so it's it's like an iceberg what ai does is a tip of the iceberg there's so much underlying data data engineering effort that goes into um, putting the data into a shape so that it can be analyzed goes into an ai model and, and then what we see is as a mere output a magic output right so you need to pick up your area of interest what you want to pick up not everybody would would like to go in depth in statistics not everybody would like to go in depth in python or sql or any any such programming language so you need to pick up your area you need to figure out what you are comfortable with you know maybe i i, I want to make a rocket but uh, um, i i i can't uh, go into that depth of of, of physics right so um, no, not not my cup of tea. So I, I I would try to pick up things that I am also you know comfortable with, with my, my interest is and something that would be relevant in the industry that would pay me as well, right? I I don't want to pick up agriculture skills. I mean though it, it's it's a well well paying skill, but I I don't want to pick that up, right? Because I don't think that you know it would do a justification to uh, what I have learned in the past. So you need to have an amalgamation of all these three. And to answer the second part in terms of how industry would take it. So going back to, um, to the same thing that AI and businesses, they, they work hand in hand. So whenever business sees a problem, can you help them identify, yes, it's a problem that can be solved using data. Or Absolutely. it is not a problem that can be solved using data or AI. And if yes, it can be solved using data, can you structure that solution, how it would get solved? Yes, there would be an expert who would come and design that solution, test that solution, deploy that solution. You can't be jack of all trade. But can, can you take it up to that level is something that industry would expect. I think this, this is a very, very valuable uh, uh, suggestion and input you're giving to young professionals. If you see a business problem, do you have the aptitude to understand where to build it, uh, bring in technology and what kind of technology to bring in? You don't have to be the technologist there, but your ability to, two, two important points important. One, your discernment of whether it's a problem to be solved through technology or not. Because not every, because technological solution is also an expensive solution, both in terms of time, in terms of cost, right? So your ability to understand where to use it and how to use it to solve a business problem. I think that's the, for me, a very strong key takeaway for young professionals who are aspiring to, you know, change their careers, to move their careers. It's not about where are you, where do you start? It's not about what field you are in, because today, Technology, AI, data is there in every field, every domain. Now, what to our program of techno manager we're trying to give you is are those skills which will make you think as a manager, as an aspiring manager, how do I apply technology to solve business problems or where do I not apply it and enable you to take a decision so that then such people are probably the hot stars today in organizations. Right, it's just not pure play technological people or pure play managers. The, man, the combination of them are the rising stars in organizations, and somebody a lot of prospect to companies look forward to. So, all of you who are looking to be such a rising star in your career, a hot star in your career, check out this program. I'm sure the team has been sharing the kind of program we are talking about. It Have, look at that entire you know, program and at least give yourself a, uh, an opportunity, a shot to go through the evaluation of the process KPMG follows. And if you're selected, trust me, it's probably one of the best decisions you've made in your career. Before I sign off, uh, Siddharth, one last question. Sorry, I'm taking your time for a couple of minutes. Sure, sure. Right? There is a lot of fear today. Uh, you know, I'm sure we're hearing a lot of uh, uh, not so good news outside in the market, like companies like Amazon's, Microsoft's firing people. Right, we are talking about uh, uh, security around uh, you know uh, uh, total chaos, ambiguity. Probably two years earlier, when COVID came, there was so much of ambiguity. 
today suddenly in job market so much of ambiguity we're talking about technology replacing people we're talking about having technological skills managers we're talking about a lot of things while we're talking about aspiration and career growth so that i also would like to be secure in my life and my career okay <laughs> what is your expert guidance on what kind of safety net should professionals build today so that they are not the next one getting a pink slip okay so so two things first of all um you use the word recession right so i i wouldn't really call it a recession uh, we are going through an inflation phase in fact and it may or may not go to a recession phase inflation is you know when um, i think we all know what inflation is but uh, the concern today for for the government be it fed be it india is to control the inflation not not to deal with the recession that is not the stage that we are in today that's one second is uh, see layoff is not happening because of uh, the technological advancement that i have it's a cycle in corporate right all 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 the key giant tech players or um, large companies they do away with uh, some some low percentages of the numbers let's say the um, the non performers as we call them right and uh, every 3 to 5 years you would see that um, these layoffs take place sometimes they they are a bit high in the number which it is this time but usually you know they are not and uh, i would not call it a layoff season i think it's it's the hiring that picked up in 21 and we we saw that great attrition phase right the great resignation phase where everybody was switching jobs moving here and there so things are going back to normal the way it was back in prior to covid era right so this is the normalization phase this is something that i would call and if you if you look at uh, the website of the same companies who have fired or uh, laid off a lot of people they are hiring absolutely right but i wouldn't so, relate to people that's the idea yes, yes so you that is what the point is you have to stay relevant you have to pick up skills that are there in the demand today i would not hire somebody who can write um, maybe you not know, who can do data entry on tally as an erp system i i want to hire somebody who have multiple skills who can who can write code in python who can perhaps use alter x as a low code no code tool who can who can write a brd for me who can define my business requirements right who can who can marry uh, all, all, all these things together right you you need to have multiple skills and and that is why initially we talked about that t shape right you know one skill in depth and then you know multiple on top of that so you you, you would stay relevant in the market yeah so so the two key takeaways again from this one if you want a security like in this new normalization of new normal we have, have so many new normals already In the in 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 the current new normal for you to stay uh, 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 to have a secure job, I think the key there is to stay relevant. Then at least you are hanging on to your job. But if you are able to slightly move ahead, uh, you know, by bringing the combination of all the skills, technology management, and you know, becoming a techno manager, you are not just going to be relevant, but you are also going to be leading the show as well. Right? Thank you all uh, for uh, joining uh, this session. Special thanks to Siddharth. Siddharth, that was really valuable. I'm sure our audience today were able to understand the importance of staying relevant, the T-shaped uh, uh, in a skill development, trying to be upskilling themselves to, so that they are continuously moving ahead in their career, and the fact that you and your team has fabulously worked on a program like that, you know, techno manager program. which will enable people gives them that opportunity and platform to just not stay relevant and secure their careers but actually to move ahead in their careers i think that's a fabulous initiative from your team and happy that ideology had a small role to play in that in bringing uh, that program to life you know and to our students uh, we would look forward for each one of you attended this audience in case you have any specific further more queries you can always write to our team So they're sharing the details out there, and we will revert. Siddharth probably himself might reply to some of you guys. 
and look forward to each one of you being a part of our process and hope to see each one of you uh, being going through our process being selected for this particular program and eventually being really really successful in your careers we wish you all the very best thank you once again uh, for each one of you to attend siddharth thank you for your time thanks thanks suman thanks for having me here you have been a wonderful host thanks everyone for joining in absolutely and wish you all a fabulous evening and good night thank you